Hello guys and welcome to Mass Effect Andromeda Performance Guide. This is gonna be for people with mediocre PCs like myself who need that few extra FPS to run that buttery smooth 60 throughout the game on 1080p of course. Um, so if you want to know how to achieve that keep watching the video. If you have like the awesome god tier badass PC of death and doom and destruction <laughs> then you don't want to do anything with this video, just crank everything to ultra, you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, this is for people who need that few extra FPS to run the game on a buttery smooth 60. And as you can see here, on the Tempest, which is one of the most demanding places in the game, for some reason, for FPS, we're running a very smooth 6 seconds, spin the camera around all I want. It only dips to 59, so... Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, there's a couple of changes you need to do, so let's get right into it. Um, oh, shit, wrong thing. So, without further ado, um, video output, first thing. You want to run the game on windowed borderless. 99% of the time, this will give you like a 5 to 6 FPS boost, as well as you can alt about. It's just, you know, the nicest, so use it, just do it. Uh, if you're noticing any weird things happening with your current driver or um, video card, then, um, you know, run it on full screen. But for, like, the most majority of people, Windows Borderlands is the best one to use, so go for that. Also, before we go into anything, make sure, guys, you have the latest drivers. It's very important. Just check your Catalyst if you're an AMD user. Check your whatever NVIDIA guys have. Um... I'm an AMD guy myself, so I don't know any of that stuff, I, I'm sorry to say, but you can Google it, latest NVIDIA driver, latest AMD driver, it will take you to the page, just get that before you go into any of this, it will give you quite a bit of performance increase. So yeah, that's the first thing. And now let's get into things. So um, this is just your monitor, which monitor you use, uh, I'm using my BenQ, so yay. It's not the best monitor ever, but whatever. VSync. I only have it on because I'm recording. And if I'm not, if I don't have VSync on for some reason, if I start recording with OBS, it just gets stuttering like crazy. I don't know why it's a weird um, thing with the driver, I guess. I don't know, but I need to have this on when I'm recording. With that said, turn this off, okay? If you're not recording, if you're not having issues without it, then turn it off. It will give you a huge performance impact. For some reason in this game, VSync is really bad. So turn that thing off. Okay, very important. And both of these turn off as well. Uh, they make quite a bit of performance hit, like four to five FPS I found. Um, so, and they make the game run a little bit smoother, turning these off. So yeah, definitely all three off. Only turn VSync on again if you're having problems when you turn it off, okay? Which I did have, so... Alright, now we go into graphics. Alright, uh, don't care about any of this stuff. And uh, let's go right into film grain. Film grain is that little weird, like, ants are running on the screen looking thing that makes the game look kind of like a movie. I don't like it personally. This is a like hundred percent personal thing, guys. If you you know like it, like the look of it, then turn it on. I personally hate it, so I always turn it off in games. I'm playing a game, not watching a movie, you know. So yeah, but it has like no performance impact on like one FPS, maybe I don't know. Like you know, doesn't matter. If you like it, turn it on. Chromatic Aberration, same thing. If you like it, turn it on. It gives you like a 2-3 FPS boost, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and uh, it it's the thing that gives like a weird blue tint to things, like a blue lighting to things. I don't know, personally I don't like it. Uh, especially on cutscenes, it can look a little bit weird, so I just turn it off. And it gives you performance as well, so you know, why not? Um, but yeah, again, you know, preference. If you like it, turn it on. Uh, overall quality, of course, custom. Resolution scale mode, custom, of course. Uh, or you can just set it up to auto 1080p. You know, whichever. But if you have it on custom, 
have it on 1.0, it's the same thing. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you sorry, if you can't achieve uh, 60 FPS even with this tutorial done, like I you you do everything I tell you to do, and you are not getting 60 FPS, you are running on a laptop or something, you can lower this. Now, by lowering this, you will really, really hurt your, like, the look of the game, okay? It won't look nearly as nice. But, um, I would suggest going not further down than 0 0.75, which, at which point you might as well not play the game. Because it just looks so grainy and washed out and just generally bad that I wouldn't really suggest it. That said, it gives you a huge performance in, uh, increase. So by lowering it to like 85 or 90 or something like that, you can get that 60 FPS going for you. And the same way, if you're having a lot of uh, extra performance, like you're running on like 90 and it never plummets below 70, you can up this a little bit and make your screen look a little bit sharper. I personally don't really care, so I'm fine with just 1080p on that. Now on to the interesting stuff. Texture quality, very important guys. This has everything to do with your RAM and VRAM. VRAM is the RAM of your video card. I have four gigabytes. Because of that, I can run the game on ultra texture quality. If you don't have four gigabytes, if you like two or three, with three, I would suggest running it on high. With two or less, I would suggest running it on medium just for the best performance. But again, if you have that four gigabyte, um, on your uh, VRAM, then run it on Ultra. Same with the RAM. If you have decent RAM, like eight gigabytes, at least, Ultra is good. If anything less, high should be fine for you if you have that four gigabyte VRAM, okay? So yeah, Ultra on four, three, two, and down on laptops, okay? So that's texture. Uh, and of course, you know what texture quality does. It makes the textures look sharper and cleaner and uh, less washed out, so there you go. Anti-aliasing. Um, this makes the edges very smooth and nice looking, not. <laughs> Anti-aliasing is not the greatest in this game. You can send your video card after it, set it up um, in your catalyst if you're an AMD guy like myself, or set it up in the NVIDIA control panel, whatever it is called, um, in your game settings, but uh, Temporal A is good, FXA is good, preference thing again. Uh, FXA gives you a little bit more performance, not much, couple of FPS. Uh, I personally use temporal uh, anti-aliasing, but again, preference thing. If you turn this off, the edges will just look really, you know, like you have, will have that stair step uh, effect going, which is like this on the edges, right? And you don't want that, it just looks weird. And this, cost you uh, five to six FPS, I would say, but I would suggest getting it on again because otherwise it will look weird. Only way to have this off if you have a really big screen, like if you're playing on a TV or if you're playing on, um, you know, something with a very big screen or you are like projecting it to the wall and playing it like that, like a G, then... <laughs> Turn this off because you won't notice the difference at that, those sizes, right? But if you're running on a you know decent medium-sized uh, monitor, then you definitely want it. Uh, ambient occlusion. This is a big one. Um, it can really badly plummet your FPS. Now my video card handles it really well, um, so I have it on HBAO. Experiment with this one. I would suggest turning it down to off. Um, it will make the shadows, especially on the face, not as prominent, so cutscenes might look weird to you. If they do, SSAO is still pretty good. But if you want that ni the, those nice cutscenes, which I do want because I'm doing a playthrough of it, then you want HBAO. But again, if you're going for FPS mainly, then I would suggest turning this off, because it does have quite a bit of a performance impact, okay? Now, with that said, there's not much difference between HVAO and uh, SSAO. And HBAO looks a lot better. So, if you want to use it, you might as well use HBAO 
or off. That's my suggestion, but again, experiment with this. Uh, it really varies in terms of what kind of card you have. Um, so yeah, and if you want to, you know, have some nice cutscenes and uh, generally nice facial shadows and that sort of thing, like small shadows, okay, and depth. Um, so yeah, I use it if you want performance off. If you want it, then I would suggest HBL. All right, on to post-process quality. I have this on low. Um, you don't really see much of a difference, to be honest, if you have it on ultra to low. Like, it doesn't show that much of a difference at all. And it's like one of the biggest performance hidden hitters in the game. So I would really strongly su suggest turning this to low. And... Um, because there isn't much in terms of looks, turning this anything but low, like medium or high, doesn't make any sense because you won't see the difference, right? And it will cost you F performance. So have this on low, or if you really want it, then you can use ultra, but I, I wouldn't suggest high or medium at all because it just goes to FPS and you won't see the difference of it. So definitely low on that one. Uh, depth of field quality. Um, depth of field it makes the game look a lot more alive, let's say, a lot more real looking. Um, especially on foliage and um, ground textures and that, th that sort of thing. Uh, the corners have uh, some more depth to them, things like that, okay. So I have this on medium, and that's the best spot to be in my opinion, because between low and medium, you won't see any difference. So, might as well have it on medium. I mean, in terms of performance, like low and medium cost you the same performance and medium looks a little bit better, so might as well. Um, Ultra has quite a bit of performance hit. So only have this if you have a couple of extra frames locked away. Uh, but I would really suggest medium. You won't see that much of a difference on higher Ultra for it to justify the FPS, so medium on that. Motion blur, if you like it, have it on. I only have it on because, again, I'm doing a playthrough and it looks nice on action scenes, but uh, turning it off, you know, personal preference, it won't cost you any FPS. Uh, it might cause some stuttering when you're fighting in on some cards I read on forums, so if you're experiencing any of that, turn this off, it might solve your problem. I have it on for my recordings, so there you go. Texture filtering, not any difference on FPS in terms of low to ultra, so leave this on ultra, you'll be fine. Uh, if you ha don't have too much VRAM, I would suggest turning it down to high maybe, but um, it should run fine on ultra, and it will make your textures look a lot nicer, so have this up on ultra. Lighting quality, very important, huge hitter on performance again. Turn this down to low if you're having any problems. If not, I wouldn't suggest, again, medium or high. Uh, it won't cause you your game to look any better, and it will just cost you FPS, like we told about, you know, depth of field and all that. So either ultra or low. Low for FPS, of course. Um, shadows quality, again, big hitter. I only have it on medium because low shadows just look really horrible, very blocky. Um, and there's not a big performance jump from low to medium, so I would suggest a medium on that one. Of course, if you can, ultra shadows look really, really nice, but um, it should be fine with high to medium. I personally would suggest medium for you. Effects quality, if you're having any performance drops in the middle of battles, like when there's a lot of explosions and things are happening really fast and you're running around, dodging and weaving and bobbing, then, um, and if you're having, uh, you know, FPS drops, then turn this down to low, which I was having, because that's all to have to do with effects. So turn this down to low, and it's a very important one, on the Tempest. If you're having performance problems on the Tempest, turn effects quality down to low. It will make a huge difference. I don't know why, I think because of the lights, they have some glow effects on them, or I don't know. But turning this down to low made me like a big, big, big performance hit in big battles and on the Tempest. So, very important one. And I wouldn't really suggest turning it up too much 
Again, I wouldn't suggest ultra at all. Uh, medium to low, you should be fine. You won't see the difference anyway in the middle of the battle, so it's all good. Um, mesh quality... Um, this really depends on the card again. I would suggest medium for a good, you know, looks to performance balance. Shader quality, you can leave it on high. It won't cost you too much um, performance hit. So leave that on high, it's fine. Terrain quality, um, I only have it on medium because when there's like big open panoramas, you know, of like the whole planet, you can see like two, four kilometers or miles, I should say. <laughs> um, then... You know, it can cost you a few FPS, like a 5 to 6 drop, if you have it on higher ultra. So, medium is good for me, personally. But uh, if you have a few tucked, few FPS tucked away, you can turn this to ultra or high. Um, it will make the panoramas, when you look really far into the distance, look a lot sharper and nicer and with more color and that sort of thing. Ah, sorry, almost choked. <laughs> and uh, that sort of thing, so... Yeah. Um, medium should be fine on that. Vegetation quality, you can leave this on Ultra. It doesn't have too much of a performance impact at all. So, leave this on Ultra. Oh, again, sorry, one more thing about turning quality. If you have a mediocre CPU, so you, your render speed is not that good, then turn this down, because this has to do with your CPU rendering things from afar, right? So, turn this to medium will help that. Uh, frame buffer format... Uh, I don't know much about this, but I heard that half 16, I don't know what it is, it caused people problems. I don't really know what this does. Like, I, I don't really want to talk bullshit here. You can Google it if you want. There's some forum posts on it. I don't really understand it. I'm not like a huge IT guy. So, but I would suggest compressed 30 bits. It just works better for most people. Most majority of people. So, there you go, that's pretty much all there is, really. Um, yeah. Straightforward. That's about it. Nothing more uh, to it. So, if you do this, and you still don't have 60 FPS, like if you're playing on a laptop, as I said, resolution scale, low rate below 1 to like at least um, 0.90, or 0.75 at most, okay? And there you go, guys. I think the game looks pretty nice. I will run around a little bit so you can see it doesn't drop at all. It's a very buttery smooth, stable 60. Everything is nice. Look at that. Rooms are rendering. It dropped to 59 there, so... Yeah. And this is the cargo area, which has, like, the most performance hit on the game. I don't know why. There's some lights here that really... See? So that, 57. Yeah, this is where I had like 32 FPS before I did the changes. But as you can see, it's a very, very stable. Around 60. Um, it only go drops now because I'm recording. So if you're not recording, this should stay very stable 60. But even like if it drops to like 55s and things like that, you know... You won't notice it at all. Like, I only notice it because I have that FPS counter up there. So, I think it's because of these glowing lights. And there's so many of them that causes the performance hit here. I'm not sure. So, hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. And, uh, hope you have fun with it. Experiment. Game will, re will run and look good if you just take a little time to set it up properly. Um, so yeah, do that, and have fun in Andromeda, guys. See you on the next video, and as always, have a good one. Bye-bye. Peace.